you are ready, y'all. So I'm going to react to um, Hot Off The Wall, Save Michael Jackson's Career. The year was 1979, and with the 80s around the corner, Michael Jackson decided to reintroduce himself as one of music's most important stars. The release of Off The Wall came at a pivotal time for music. Disco was dying out, hip-hop was just around the corner, some artists started experimenting with music videos, and there was just an overall shift happening in music. A shift that Off The Wall greatly encapsulates. It was a forward-thinking album that previewed the takeover that Michael Jackson was going to have in the 1980s. And if you ask me, this is the album that truly made Michael Jackson a star. And to truly understand what I mean by that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. In October 6th of 1969, the world was introduced to the Jackson 5 with the release of I Want You Back. The group was an instant success as the song climbed and climbed over to the top of the charts. People loved the Jackson 5. They were the quintessential group that exhibited what you wanted your- Michael Jackson looks mad young, bro. So, he is- he was, he looked, he was looking so young, young, bro. Tends to be. And although they were a package deal, it definitely seemed like the star of the group was going to be Michael. <laughs> Even at the young age of 11, Michael wowed the general audience with his personality, singing abilities, and even some dancing. On top of I Want You Back going to number one, the group's following three singles would also do the same thing. The Jackson 5 were as PG as PG gets with cartoons, board games, and songs about the most innocent things. And they look pretty cool too, so it was kinda hard to hit. I ain't gonna lie, they fake dead though, I ain't gonna hold you. They dead. These guys, they had released a total of five albums in three years, including one of the better Christmas albums, by the way. And overall, all of the albums were relatively successful. Things were initially looking bright for the group as the 70s got underway, but it really didn't take long for people to move on from the Jackson 5. And honestly, you could blame it on a lot of things. Some people may attribute it to the fact that Michael was going through puberty. Others might say that the group just wasn't as PG as it was before. But for me, it comes to- Maybe because they, they was getting, like, you know, older, you know, like, people change once, you know, people change once, once, well, some people, some people change once, you know, they get older, you are to two things. One is overexposure, as from 1969 to 1973, the group had released eight studio albums. And maybe at the time that was more of a normal thing, but from a modern lens, it just looks like they were being overworked. And the second option, the more likely option, is the fact that the Jackson 5 did not have creative control. As it relates to songwriting and the overall process of making a song, the group had no say. It worked in the beginning when they weren't expected to be anything else than just some kids who can sing, but they were reaching a point where the audience needed more than just some kids that can sing. Even the success of songs like Dancing Machine could be attributed to the ability of Michael Jackson, more so than the song itself being good. And that's not to say it's a bad song, I'm just saying Michael Jackson carried. Look at him dance, he actually looks like a robot. Anyways, by 19... Damn, Michael Jackson was getting light. You are. 75, the Jackson 5 decided to leave Motown Records, heading over to the guys at Philadelphia International. Before making another move to Epic Records, the Jacksons reestablished themselves as people to be taken seriously with the release of Destiny. Don't blame it on sunshine. Don't Destiny was the first album where the Jacksons had full control of the creative directions in terms of producing and writing, with the Jacksons taking care of writing and producing duties for most of the album. And you know what? I think it worked. I mean, not only did I think it worked, most people did as well. And I'm pretty sure the Jacksons were eager to show people that they had a lot to offer. Because on the demo for Shake Your Body, you hear Jackie say, 
And although Destiny had re-established the brothers as a group to be taken seriously, it was time for Michael Jackson to re-establish himself as well. By this point, Michael Jackson had already released four albums under Motown Records as a solo artist, which again meant that he had no creative control when it came to releasing those four albums. However, Jackson would prove that he could do something by himself with the release of Off The Wall. <laughs> Now, this album was going to be crucial as to whether or not... Nah, my son Michael Jackson got drip. I ain't gonna lie. Look at that sparkly shirt that he, that he wore, bro. Michael Jackson could succeed as a solo star. And there's really no point in me building up suspension as to whether or not it was successful because it was clearly successful. Looking back, there's not an album quite like Off The Wall. Having influences with soul and disco, turning that into a pop record and having it be successful at a time where people didn't really rock with disco anymore, it just speaks to how talented MJ is. The album is full of gems, with the brightest one being the iconic Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. This is my favorite song on the album, and honestly, when it comes to MJ songs, it might be my favorite. This track is like a whole experience. In the beginning, there's not a lot going on. You got Mike, but he's like soft-spoken and shit. And then the track explodes into the iconic song that we all know. I don't even know what this song is about, to be honest with you, but it really doesn't matter. When a good song is a good song, it will find a way to be good. And whether it's through the hook or instrumentation, this song does that. Of course, Michael Jackson does deserve a lot of credit, but some of the credit can also be given to the producer for the album, Quincy Jones. Quick history lesson on Quincy Jones. Quincy was a legendary producer who had worked with Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, among many others. He met Michael Jackson on production for The Wiz, and the rest was history. And I will say that people highly debate who did what or whatever, but for the purposes of this video, it was a good relationship and all of them made good music together. Anyways, speaking of cool instrumentation, rock with you. Very cool instrumentation and really good production as well. The little snap on the hook is so satisfying to me, by the way. And again, this is another one of those songs that is essentially just a vibe, but it's a good vibe. And while we're talking about this song, the music video is one of my favorite Michael Jackson music videos. I mean, it might be one of my favorite music videos of all time, to be honest with you. Just the lighting of it is insane to me, and I really like it, especially because at the time, music videos weren't all the rage. You know, this is before MTV. This is how forward-thinking, like, either Michael Jackson is, or the label, or whoever is putting this together. And obviously, it's not the only song on the album with a music video, but it's the best music video on this album. And again, one of the better ones for Michael Jackson as a whole and it's a big reason why this song is as iconic as it is but as a whole the album has a lot of sounds that you don't really get to see in modern music like for example the title track has a lot of orchestration to it which in the modern day of digital music really gets lost like you don't really hear those type of horns anymore and that's not to put down modern music because obviously i like modern music it's just to point out the differences and if you want to say that this album is too much of a one-dimensional album first off i would think you're pretty crazy uh but secondly michael jackson also shows off his range a little bit He's out of my life. Although not a big focus on the album, some of these songs on the album really show the emotion that Michael has, or more accurately, the emotion that he's willing to portray. All in all, the story of Michael Jackson was really just beginning with Off The Wall. But without Off The Wall, he doesn't get to throw. He doesn't collaborate with Quincy Jones. And overall, I feel like a lot of what made Michael Jackson special 
would be missing. Because Off The Wall wasn't just a crucial MJ album, it was an album that set the tone for a new generation of music. Anyways, with that being said, shout out to uh, MJ, I guess, shout out to Jay Dilla, uh, shout out to me, shout out to Jay Dilla again, um, and yeah. Okay, that's the bed, bro, like, so yeah, let me know what y'all think, bro, like, what was your favorite Michael Jackson, no, yeah, Michael Jackson song ever, what is your favorite Michael Jackson song, like, let me know, comment down below, bro. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the vibes. Whoever just checking out, you are.